It sounds like something out of a movie, like out of that Ben Affleck Boiler Room movie. Yeah, basically, that oh, you have this stuff. shell, exactly, that you have this shell company that doesn't really do anything. It does have a website, but the website doesn't actually appear to transact any business. It, it says that you can pay to be connected with celebrities or with other people, but if you try to sign up, it doesn't seem to quite work. So. But, you know, it's interesting because I talked to a gentleman yesterday who uh, trades in these penny stocks on a regular basis, conducts seminars on how to do it. He says, it, you guys aren't paying attention to the right thing. It doesn't matter what it's supposed to do. That's not the point. It could do anything. What's the point then? The point is, is that someone is trying to get people to buy this thing. And for a little while, it worked pretty well. But the uh, SEC did indeed step in this morning. It said in this statement that it temporarily suspended trading temporarily. We'll see how, if that becomes permanently in the securities of sync because of concerns regarding the accuracy and adequacy of information in the marketplace and potentially manipulative transactions in the common stock. And so that's that's the key, right? We don't know what's going on in the shadows. We don't know if there really is a pump and dump scheme we don't. Uh, operating. We don't know who may have paid commentators or newsletter writers well, we to start know, talking about sync we do know that about a month ago there were a number of tweets that came out that were virtually identical that said this stock is going to go up 750 percent it was sort of purporting to give hmm. tips on it and that's when we started to see i mean it had the increase in the stock had started to happen mm -hmm. before that but then it accelerated after those tweets i wonder what the guy you spoke with thought about the sec statement about inaccuracies in the filing documents and everything given that this well, is a company with no real assets and no real employees yeah i mean i talked to him before the sec actually halted trading but he said you know this is not uncommon necessarily that you have this sort of mystery shrouding these companies. And I just got off the phone with Jacob Frankel, who used to be with the Securities and Exchange Commission, is a securities uh, attorney. And he said, indeed, this is something that's relatively common. And he prosecuted a lot of these, or litigated, I should say, a mm. lot of these uh, pump and dump or stock. If it is, in fact, a pump and dump scheme. If it is, in fact, that. And said. Because that's where people if, are being tricked. Correct. Right? If this is just a momentum play, if people are just piling into a stock that's moving, you know, they're the victims of their own ignorance if they lose money because they can do what we did if they wanted to, right? What you did yesterday, sure. Julie, pull up securities so filings, pick up the phone, call right. the number in the Edgar document, do all of these things and establish for themselves whether there's anything to this business right. or not. So the question is, have they been deceived in some way? Have they been told something that's not true about what's going to be happening with the company? And he said this kind of thing has become more common uh, as we've gotten more into the Internet age, people abroad can be sending emails, they can be tweeting, they can be doing other types of social media in order to try to get the word out. That also makes it more difficult for the SEC to investigate and eventually bring some sort of uh, suit or action related to it because of that, if you have these offshore entities who are doing this kind of thing. The other question that this brings is, does this mean we're in a bubble? Is it sort of a sign of the frothiness of the market? Now, we've been debating about this for the past couple of days. We talked to Paul Kudrowski, um, who is more technology focused. He thinks it is. Um, earlier, I was emailing with John Coffey, another securities law professor. He thinks it is. But, I mean, again, this kind of thing happens relatively frequently. Right. So it's, it's not so unusual. See, right. It's just, I think it's a one, sign that investors are as gullible as ever. Yes. Gullibility doesn't necessarily seem to change. No, it's sadly. not a trend. That's not a bubble condition.